It's Aaron Mattem sitting in for Jimmy Dore here with Kurt Metzger and Max Blumenthal, editor of The Gray Zone. And we're talking about how within 24 hours, progressive Democrats in Congress retracted a very tepid letter just calling on Joe Biden to engage in diplomacy with Russia. And when they retracted, a series of signatories who signed this thing sort of fell over themselves to apologize and to make clear that they did not support the content of the letter that they signed. And so one of them is a Congress member named Jamie Raskin. And so here he is. Uh, he says this after the letter was withdrawn. He says, glad the Congressional Progressive Caucus withdrew yesterday's letter. Let's focus on the fundamental importance of the Ukrainian struggle for national sovereignty, democracy, and freedom, and continue to unite America behind this historic imperative. So Jamie Raskin is glad that the Congressional Progressive Caucus withdrew a letter that he signed. <laughs> <laughs> so he released this statement this is this is some of what he says uh it's pretty interesting he says this he sounds like a college kid you know uh trying to uh write about anti-imperialism he says it is a bad colonial habit to suppose that ultimately peace depends upon the wishes of the great powers and the great powers alone and even progressive and liberal people can fall into this colonialist reflex so by calling for negotiations with Russia, you've fallen somehow into a colonialist That's what reflex. that means? <laughs> yes. Oh, yes. I thought it was like an old comment he made that he's like a hypocrite about now. <laughs> he's saying that about- He's saying that about the people who wanted congressional progressives to stand behind their own letter. Oh, they want to the be marched. They want to be crash dummies for- a, <laughs> Wow. Uh, and then he goes on, uh, Ukraine's struggle embodies a democratic future. Thousands of Ukrainian women are fighting on the front, and a woman serves as deputy minister of defense. Sexual minorities are represented within the Ukrainian armed forces. Ukrainian soldiers routinely speak two languages. Ukraine <laughs> has displayed a striking degree of toleration and decency <laughs> during a war. Well, for so many Nazis, you know. Yeah, for Nazis, though, I guess they're doing pretty, <laughs> pretty good. Pretty good for yeah. that many Nazis. Yeah. Max Blumenthal, let me bring you in here. What do you think of uh, this statement that where he says that Ukraine has displayed a striking degree of toleration and decency during this war? Before I get to that, uh, there was actually something I really think is important to get on the record that I didn't mention in the last segment, but is relevant here because I think Raskin has made this point to Sarah Jacobs, another member of the Progressive Caucus. They've said that this letter they're denouncing was uh, authored in June. Um. White Reed, actually, our, our friend and journalist, uh, actually pointed this out to me. If you look at the letter, they're denouncing um, illegal referendums. Um, they're 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 denouncing referendums that occurred after June. Um, additional illegal annexations of Ukrainian territory. So I think they're lying there. They're not telling the truth. Well, um, I think it's possible the staffers just added some some more text to reflect more recent developments. I, I could see them uh, doing that just to update themselves based on what happened since people signed it. It's possible. Um, but you have to question how they signed that just a few months ago. And now Raskin, whose name was on there, why he's making these, these such strong statements that sound like Bush era neocons. They sound like something that would be in a project for new American century letter. And he's lying about the, quality or the, the reality of contemporary Ukraine and the Kiev regime, which has been installed since uh, the Maidan coup in 2014, whether Zelensky was elected or not, this is a regime that's in control here. He's talking about um, what? Ukrainian women fighting on the front. You know, it's, a, <laughs> a woke, it's a woke army. It's like they're like the Me Too Mujahideen fighting Putin's, people, uh, fighting Putin's proud boys. Uh, a woman is, you know, if you uh, question aid to Ukraine, you do not believe all women. Uh, sexual minorities are fighting there. I mean, they're waving the rainbow flag. It's uh, LGBTQ CIA army here. Um, Ukrainian soldiers routinely <laughs> speak two languages. Uh, and are they, is he going to say Ukrainian soldiers have two spirits? Uh, they've displayed yeah. a striking degree of toleration and decency. Right. Uh, last week, we had photos from a member of the neo-Nazi Azov Battalion, which is fighting on the front lines of this woke army, 
throwing the bodies of Ukrainian civilians who are ethnic Russians into a ditch after executing them because this is territory supposedly liberated by the Ukrainian army from Russian forces. And these people were accused of being Russian collaborators. That's what happens. Anyone who's accused of being a collaborator by the Ukrainian forces gets <clears throat> wrapped up and killed. We've seen Ukrainian officials boast about this. And Tom Garashenko, who's an advisor to the interior ministry, he's got a blue check on Twitter. He's boasted about the assassination of Ukrainian mayors for negotiating with Russia. We have communists who are activists in Ukraine, Ukrainian communists who have been tortured and jailed after being arrested by Ukrainian SBU agents. Zelensky has banned 13 political parties, his entire opposition. He has had uh, Dmitry Medvedchuk, his main the main opposition leader, arrested the Ukrainian SBU, apparently beat him and jailed him, banned his entire party, the Party for Life. Members of Ukrainian Party for Life have been captured, assassinated, uh, jailed. Human rights advocates have been kidnapped throughout this war in Ukraine. Pretty much anyone questioning it in any media that questions the war is outlawed, and all media has been uh, brought together into a single entity, which has been broadcasting 24-7 propaganda for the war inside Ukraine. And we've seen on Ukrainian networks like uh, N24, I believe, we've seen full-on Nazi-like calls for the extermination of Russians. This is, stands at odds with the uh, woke, liberal, Tacoma Park, Berkeley-like republic that Jamie Raskin is describing here. And when he talks about how soldiers speak two languages, uh, he overlooks that one of the reasons why there's been a civil war going on in Ukraine for eight years after the U.S. backed a coup in 2014 and installed a, helped install government that was dominated by fascist elements, one of the first things they did was try to ban the Russian language. And they've tried to ban uh, Russian literature and culture even before Russia invaded. So this has been going on for a long time. There's been a, a, an effort to erase the ethnic Russian component of Ukraine, one of the major reasons why we have this uh, war today. And in terms of banning television networks, that was also happening before Russia invaded. It happened in early 2021 when Zelensky just took uh, three opposition television networks off of the air. So this idea that even the crackdowns have happened only in a time <laughs> of war is, is, is not even true. But let's go on. He says something. He also he, he goes on with this uh, theme that somehow uh, Ukraine is the symbol of, uh, of uh, woke freedom. He says this. Uh, Moscow right now is a hub of corrupt tyranny, censorship, authoritarian repression, police violence, propaganda, government lies, and disinformation, and planning for war crimes. Unlike the U.S., of course. We don't do <laughs> yeah. that. We don't do any of that. No, come on. Propaganda, government lies, and disinformation, war crimes? No, no. Uh, Russia is also a world center of anti-feminist, anti-gay, anti-trans hatred as well as the homeland of replacement <laughs> theory for export in supporting really? Ukraine. Oh my God. We are supporting these. Fa we are in supporting Ukraine. We are opposing these fascist views and supporting the urgent principles of democratic pluralism. <laughs> Sounds as bad as Hogwarts and <laughs> JK rallies. <laughs> Has he seen what happened at the past Ukrainian gay pride parades? It wasn't too pretty. Yeah. No, why did Patriot front show up with smoke bombs? I was smoke bombs. It was like straight up truncheons, clubs, knives, you know, the just brutalization of activists with no police uh, interference at all. Huh. And in fact, what, what we, one of the leaders of that gang, C-14, that was very involved in the Maidan coup 2014 uh, on the side of the forces that the U.S. put in power. He even bragged in that video that if not for us, Maidan would have been a gay pride parade. So he was basically bragging. Yeah, we that, played that on. <laughs> yeah, yeah it, it was played on the show. He bragged that actually the fascist element of of the coup turned Maidan from a peaceful protest against corruption, which is that that's how it started, into a violent uh, regime change backed by the U.S. Yeah, Victoria Newland was wasn't backing the quote unquote gay pride bridge. She was backing the Nazis because they brought the muscle, they brought the regime change for an ideological fervor. Yeah. So look, all this is uh wait but if they show up in like their uniforms don't you maybe at first think they're just part of the parade <laughs> touche so look you know here on the jimmy door show at the gray That's zone what we pay you for kurt <laughs> <laughs> we've been talking about for a long time how uh russiagate uh the conspiracy theories that trump was a russian asset 
this effort led by Democrats in concert with the intelligence community to blame Russia for Trump, to sow fear of Russia and criminalize diplomacy with Russia, which is what Russiagate was all about, that all this was going to lead to danger and a situation like we're in right now. And our guest, Max Blumenthal, uh, uh, delivered this warning firsthand to Jamie Raskin, uh, this Congress member, in 2017 uh, when he interviewed Jamie Raskin during a Russiagate rally. So let's watch a clip of that. You said we don't have all the facts. So what are the, like, what is the most well, that's powerful? We need an independent commission. We need an independent commission to get all the facts. All we have is clues, you know? So we know that Page and Manafort and Stone were on the Russian payroll. We know there are all these meetings, you know, between the son-in-law, Jared Kushner, and Kislyak and all these Russian agents. And, you know, I don't know whether it was a money-making operation. I don't know whether they were actually colluding to distort the news and to frame the campaign. But that's why we need an independent commission. In France, they hacked and trashed Macron in a bid to elect the right-wing immigrant bashing Marine Le Pen. You said that uh, Russia hacked the f- attempted to hack Macron in the French elections. Yeah, well, we know that. I mean, I, I mean, the Washington Post has reported that the French cyber intelligence agency has said that it's not true. Well, I mean, I haven't read this article, but but certainly Macron is convinced it's not true. That, yeah, well, certainly Macron is convinced of it, and everything that we read before was. Well, I mean, it was reported days ago. The, the Associated <laughs> Press. Well, but all the information I've seen is that there was. A hacking and a good. data dump Welcome, television the weekend before there was certainly a data dump and so are, are they maybe it could have been anyone well it's quite the French the French uh, top cyber intelligence agency the government yeah. got access to the servers you support an independent commission yeah but I but but but, but, but look at what but you said that Roger Stone hosted a show on RT Roger Stone hosted a series on the Russia propaganda network do, do you believe that we need Roger Stone didn't host a show on RT? You think he's never been on an RT? But he didn't host a show. Okay, well look, the, you know, you can go after over any picky and details you want, but I don't see what why it would be in your interest to support an autocratic authoritarian government which is jailing journalists and fighting against freedom around the world. But I think we should tell the people the truth. Well, we absolutely should tell the people the truth. If, if Macron is now saying that the Russians had nothing to do with it, I very happily stand corrected. But we know from the FBI, the CIA, the Defense Intelligence Agency, the National Security Agency, that that Russia was involved in trying to subvert our election. And why would you try to hide that? Just a correction. He, it's actually, when he says the DIA, that's actually not true. It was only uh, a small group of analysts uh, handpicked by James Clapper and led by the CIA who put together that whole intelligence assessment about accusing Russia of hacking the election. 18 agencies, Aaron. Yeah, exactly. Right. Um, yeah. Can I say <laughs> some, something that maybe lowers the tone? But did he have his, did he, it looked like he had ball hair glued to his head. <laughs> <laughs> Like the whole time you're talking about, I don't know how you. <laughs> yeah, well, I can't talk about anybody's hair. So. Yeah, yeah. They um, well, look. So look, Max. It, it went on. I like have that said, same Hitler haircut a... today. <laughs> it, it just went on where he was like saying Hitler was elected, and like he he like descended into hit, but Hitler was elected, which isn't even true. And I pointed that out, and he's like, but but but. Yeah, it was a slaughter. Um, but reflecting on that now, Max, you know, having confronted him over that and, and you were basically it goes on in the, in the clip, you warn him about, you know, the dangers of going in all in Russiagate. Just what are your reflections on just how this kind of cold warrior mentality has taken over the Democratic Party? Raskin's a, maybe the best example of this tragedy. And yeah, I did try to warn him. I tried to warn lots of people. And that was sort of the beginning of. Uh, another, I mean, I've been castigated for my views on Israel. And that was also the time when we were speaking out more on the Syrian proxy war. So it's just a kind of, of another level of castigation and demonization um, when we started speaking out on Russiagate, because we saw it not as, uh, you know, just some attack on Trump, but as a, uh, a campaign being engineered by the national security state to set the stage for war. And now we're in that war. This is a war between NATO and Russia. And so the U.S. is in this war, whether it's sending uh, tons of boots on the ground or not. We're in this war. And Jamie Raskin has been prepared to be a part of that war because of his progeny, because of the family that he comes from. And he understands that and is so ambitious that he was willing to be molded in the hands of the national security state that his father, Marcus, spent his career denouncing. Jamie Raskin's father was Marcus Raskin, who served on the National Security Council of McGeorge Bundy during the early stage of the Vietnam War. 
And he quit the government in 1963, founded a think tank called the Institute for Policy Studies, uh, along with a former State Department hand. And they this became the first sort of moderately left-wing anti-war think tank in Washington. And Raskin published searing attacks on Marcus Raskin on the national, what he would call the national security state in 1965. He published the Vietnam Reader. This is one of the first widely circulated books denouncing the war before there was a major anti-war movement. And he continued uh, to attack the national security state in his writing. He was part of uh, anti-nuclear war organizations in the 1980s. Jamie Raskin also has a son that he's been talking about a lot, especially since January 6th. And it's another tragic story. His son committed suicide and he had a lot of hope. Uh, his name was Tommy Raskin. He was a very outspoken anti-war activist himself, a self-described anti-imperialist. He was a contributor to antiwar.com. He questioned Russiagate. He questioned the official story of the Skripal poisoning. He spoke out at his alma mater against the national security state and those who lie on its behalf. And his and Jamie Raskin has never, I was reading this NPR uh, piece where he wrote some appreciation or delivered an appreciation for his son. And he referred to him simply as an animal rights activist. He didn't represent this side of his own son, whose main focus was opposing empire, just like we do at the gray zone. So it's, it's really tragic when you have this tradition and you choose to betray it for your own ambitions and go in the direction of a democratic party that has been completely overtaken by the neocons, by the national security state, and where people like the staffers who wrote that or participated in the writing of that call for negotiations between Ukraine and Russia are now thrown under the bus by their own bosses. The Democratic Party is uh, pulling Jamie Raskin's strings, but it's also hiding behind him because of his background as a sort of uh, progressive or left liberal aristocracy. And that's, that's so upsetting to me. And it's so upsetting, uh, you know, that I would have loved to have published Tommy Raskin right now. And uh, Jamie Raskin is reduced to arguing that somehow fueling a disastrous proxy war is a defense of LGBTQ rights. It's just, uh, they will, they will exploit anything for this disastrous war. Do you, Aaron, I mean, uh, uh, Max, do you have a uh, merch of L LGBTQ CIA? That's a, probably a good T-shirt. I mean, there's that famous meme of the like of the the rainbow drone blowing up brown people and liberals cheering. Um, I mean, <laughs> honestly, like I, I if I don't really if you go down go to Tacoma Park, the district that Jamie Raskin represents, which is over the Maryland line from the neighborhood I grew up in in D.C. Uh, you'll see houses with Ukrainian flags and Black Lives Matter flags, like <laughs> as, wow. as if it's just total cognitive dissonance there. And th that to me is a meme. Like having your Christmas decorations up in July. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we're going to see you in Miami, West Palm Beach, Denver, Palm Springs, Austin, Burbank. That's right. The Saturday after Thanksgiving here in Burbank and lots of dates in Los Angeles in December. Go to JimmyDoreComedy.com for a link for all our tickets and join our premium program when you go there, too.